This video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. So the PS5 uses a cooling solution known as liquid metal. What exactly is liquid metal? Why does the PS5 use it? What's the difference between liquid metal and thermal paste? And is my PS5 going to explode if I mess up the liquid metal? Let's talk about that. In this video, I'm going to answer all those questions while I replace the liquid metal on this PS5. Liquid metal is an alloy made out of metals like gallium and indinium. It's called liquid metal because it's in liquid form at room temperature. This allows it to have greater thermal conductivity compared to thermal paste, which are considered industry standard. Now, during his teardown of the PS5, Sony Engineering Vice President Yashiro Otori explained why they use liquid metal in the PS5. He said the PS5's SOC is a small die running at a very high clock rate. This led to a very high thermal density in the silicon die, which required us to significantly increase the performance of the thermal conductor, also known as TIM, that sits between the SOC and the heatsink. The PS5 utilizes liquid metal as the TIM to ensure long-term, stable, high cooling performance. That begs the question, why would they not always just use liquid metal as the TIM? Part of the reason is because it's more expensive, but I think a lot of the reason is not only is it harder to handle, it's also less stable when you put it on the actual chip that you're trying to cool, as since it's liquid, it can move around. The PS5 has a pretty clever solution to keep that from happening, which I'll show you here in a second. Now it is important to know that you pretty much don't have to worry anything about liquid metal on the PS5 until you actually take this motherboard off of the heatsink. You can do almost any cleaning or repairs without removing this motherboard and without disturbing the liquid metal. And that's what we're here for. Just so you understand a little bit better why liquid metal is so much better than thermal paste, liquid metal transfers heat at 73 watts per meter Kelvin versus thermal paste, which is usually around eight or nine watts per meter Kelvin. Now you may be asking, what is watts per meter Kelvin? Watts per meter Kelvin is basically just a thermal transfer measurement. Watts per meter Kelvin is the number of watts conducted per meter thickness per degree of temperature difference between one side and the other. But what we really need to remember is for thermal interface material, the bigger the number, the better. Now that we understand a little bit more about liquid metal, let me show you how to replace it on a PS5. So the first thing I want to mention is usually when you remove this motherboard off of the heatsink on a PS5, a lot of times the liquid metal will kind of drain off into one of these little channels or drain off over onto the middle of the heatsink over here. So if you're careful and don't jostle the motherboard all around, it's just going to stay right where it is. It's not going to move around. It'll be just fine. When you go to put it back together, all you need to do is just make sure there is plenty of liquid metal on the actual chip itself. And I try to put the liquid metal over here onto the middle of the heatsink. So then once you put it all together, it'll just spread out as needed on its own. I'm just using a metal pick. You can use a screwdriver or various other devices to get it over where you want it. So that's if the liquid metal is basically right where you need it and you can just reassemble the motherboard and the rest of the console. So now let's talk about how to remove the liquid metal, clean the heat sink and the chip, and then reinstall new liquid metal. For this video, I'm gonna be using Conductor Knot by Thermal Grizzly. This is not sponsored by Thermal Grizzly, but I will put a link down in the description to this liquid metal if you need to buy some for yourself. In the package, you're gonna see the tube of liquid metal, some applicators, various tips, and some cleaner. Now, in my case, I want to remove the liquid metal, so I'm actually going to use this other syringe that I have set up to remove liquid metal, but you can also use the one they send just by using this tip right here. And when it's time to reapply the liquid metal, you'll want to use this metal tip right here. I also do want to mention that I am fairly new at dealing with liquid metal, so don't take my word for it. Read all the application instructions very carefully from the manufacturer that you got your liquid metal from. Now, before we go any further, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, the Ridge Wallet. I've been using my Ridge Wallet for the past nine months. It's light, sleek, and fits easily in my front pocket. It can hold up to 12 credit cards, and there's also room for cash on the back, and there's also over 30 different colors and styles. The durable materials they use means that each wallet comes with a lifetime guarantee. 
you could buy one wallet and use it for the rest of your life. Speaking of, let's see how this Ridge wallet has fared during the last nine months of being in my pocket every single day. Sometimes I'm just here in the studio, but other times I'm crawling under houses, working outside, or sitting at my editing desk. Here is the front cover of the Ridge wallet, and you can see there is just no wear at all on the front cover. The elastic part of the wallet also is in great condition. There is a little bit of paint rubbing off here and a few scratches and scuffs on this corner. Same with this corner over here. The carbon fiber on the back of the wallet also looks great. There's a little bit of paint rubbing off on this metal money clip, as I would expect since it's been in my pocket every day for nine months. I think my Ridge wallet is still looking great after nine months of continuous use, and the Ridge team is so confident you'll love yours that they give you a 45-day free test trial. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash tronixfix. That's ridge.com slash tronixfix and use code tronixfix for 10% off your first order. I'll put a link in the description that'll take you right there. Now let's get back to the video. So I have the liquid metal sort of in a little pile right here. I'm just gonna use this syringe, stick the tip in and pull it up. As you can see, it's just kind of soaking up as I go. And I'll do the same thing over here on the motherboard. Now that I've got a lot of that soaked up, I'm gonna try and move this over into a bigger pile. This will probably soak some more of it up as well onto this Q-tip. You can also just soak as much up as you can. This will clean it off, but I like to save as much as I can as well. Now, the one thing about this is if you're using a Q-tip like this and you notice any of these fibers getting in it, obviously that's not going to work. So that will just need to be tossed. Now, I do have to say that it is extremely important that every little bit of this liquid metal gets off of here and off of the APU. If there's any stray liquid metal on here or even over on the APU, it can run off and touch two points on the motherboard and cause the console to not turn on and even possibly burn out components on the motherboard. And just to show an example of how well the liquid metal sticks, this liquid metal is just right on the green solder mask. There's not really anything for it to stick to and it just kind of sticks right there pretty easily. So I'll just go through with the Q-tip and just roll the Q-tip until I get it all the way off. So it's very important to look carefully over the board anytime you're working with liquid metal to make sure there's no stray liquid metal anywhere else on the board. So now I'm getting this pretty clean. I'm gonna go over it one more time and then I'm going to remove this barrier between the liquid metal and the APU. Okay, so now I'm going to slowly lift up on this barrier, this piece of plastic. There is adhesive all around here. That's what keeps it attached to the APU. So the only thing that the liquid metal has access to is the APU die itself. And any excess liquid metal is just gonna get soaked up in this kind of like sponge-like material. That's why this piece is so important. So this is the adhesive. Unfortunately, that piece will definitely not be usable again. You usually can remove them in a way that keeps that adhesive intact, so then you can just put this piece back on. You pretty much have to have this piece, so if you somehow ruin this piece, you'll need to get another one or find another way to attach this to the APU because there's so much liquid metal on these that it will definitely drift off and probably cause problems with the little chips that I'm gonna show you here in a second. Also, if I was just replacing the liquid metal on this PS5, I wouldn't have taken this piece off. I would have just cleaned this up better and then put the liquid metal right on top here. I wanna show you what's underneath so you know the importance of this piece right here. So after we get that barrier off, then we have the APU die right here and then this other plastic piece right here. Now I'm gonna take this off so I can show you what's underneath, but this is generally not something that needs to come off. And this is the importance of those barriers. So on top of the APU, we have all these little tiny components up here. If this liquid metal were to get over to these and bridge some of these gaps, 
that would cause the PS5 to not turn on and possibly cause more major problems with the APU or other circuitry on the board. Now that you've seen this, I'm gonna put this plastic barrier back on and then put the other barrier back on and show you how to apply new liquid metal. As you can see, there's still a little teeny tiny bit of residue from the old liquid metal. I don't know that I've ever gotten all of that to come off and I've never had a problem, so that's no big deal. Now I'm gonna finish cleaning up this part of the heatsink, then we'll install the new liquid metal. Now that's looking pretty good, let's get the new liquid metal applied. So here is another one of those shields that I have that I took from a different PS5 that I actually have the adhesive intact. Now I'm just gonna push down on this adhesive. Make sure it adheres nicely. Then after we have that on there, then we can get the liquid metal in. And there we go. Now it's ready for the liquid metal. Unfortunately, the PS5 uses a lot of liquid metal and there's just no gauge to know about how much to put on. So you may wanna snap some pictures or look at pictures online of the liquid metal on the PS5. Now I'm used to installing the perfect amount of thermal paste, so I don't think it'll be too hard for me to install the perfect amount of liquid metal either. I'm actually gonna be using this liquid metal that I've saved up from several PS5s. I'm just gonna use that much for now. As you can see, it's just kind of like all beaded up on top of the APU. That's where these guys come in handy. These came in with the kit with the conductor knot. So I'm just gonna go through and rub all the edges down and that'll get this to spread right out. There we go. There we go, now you can see it's just kind of covering the whole thing. Now we need to do the same thing on the heat sink side. And I don't need very much on here because I have so much on the APU. So I'm just gonna go back and get a little bit more from there. This is just to kind of condition the surface so it will adhere very well to the liquid metal that's already on the APU. And there we go. We've covered this whole entire surface. We have the perfect amount of liquid metal on the APU. Now it's time to put it back together. What I'm gonna do is put this motherboard back onto the heat sink. Then I'm actually gonna remove it again so then we can see how it looks and if we think we have the right amount. Also, this is a very important thing about liquid metal. You can see why it's important to have this barrier here. Just watch the liquid metal as I tip this. You can see it all collecting right on this edge. Same with if I tip it this way. And that's what I was talking about earlier about liquid metal being more difficult to work with. Now I'm gonna flip this over quickly and just put it right down onto the heatsink. Now I'm gonna install the clamp to help it spread out evenly. Then I'll take it back off and see if it looks like we have the right amount. Okay, in the moment of truth, let's see what it looks like now. Okay, and you can see it's all pulled up right here on the heatsink. I don't see where it's come into contact with this sponge absorbent barrier. So I think that really was the perfect amount of liquid metal. I hope that answered all of your questions about the PS5 liquid metal. If you still have more, leave them in the comment section below and I will answer as many as I can. If you like this type of video, I have a video where I put liquid metal into a PS4 Pro. So if you wanna see that, I'll leave it up on your screen now so you can go over there and see the results of that test. Thank you so much to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching it and I hope you have a good one.